Hello, welcome to Pike Creek Farm. And today I am going to be making some jam. It's rhubarb season and strawberries. So I saw this recipe for, it was called Spring Celebration Jam. Rhubarb, strawberry, spring celebration jam. And I've been trying to find a rhubarb strawberry jam that I really like. And this one, it just sounded very appealing. It's from Bernardin. So, and it, what makes it different is it has a pack of, pack, half a cup of packed mint leaves. And you steep them and then you take them out. So they're not, it's just like the mint water is the base. So I thought it sounded really interesting and I have everything. So, I'm going to do this. It just sounds like spring and it should be really good on, you know, biscuits and English muffins and toast, or it would be great on pancakes and waffles, or, you know, you could make drinks out of it or a salad dressing. It could make a good salad dressing. So just some different ideas. And so I am going to be making that today. And I thought I would bring you guys along. And if this is your first time here, thank you so much for stopping in. My name is Renee and I live on eight acres in the thumb of Michigan. And we just love it here. And I love to harvest what we can grow and put it up and keep it in my pantry. It's been a real um, fun process to expand what I can and what we save and what we have here to be less dependent on going to grocery stores. I mean, I still have to do dairy and, you know, things, but I can come home and just go to my pantry and freezer and make meals. And I enjoy canning all the basics. I mean, my meat, my potatoes, my vegetables. I love canning that, but I also like to do the little extra things that give that extra touch, you know, make things a little special and unique. And I think this jam is gonna be that way. Something different and unique. It'd be nice to gift. So come on down and let's make strawberry rhubarb spring celebration jam. The first step is to wash your strawberries and hull them, take the cores out, you know, the stems. And then we have to we need to like chop them up, crush them. So I have a bowl here and I'm gonna put them in there. I know some people do it like in a food processor or a blender. I don't usually do that. I'm afraid it adds too much air to it. So this is the way I usually do it. So I just put them in a bowl. It says you can do them in a flat like a single layer. I don't use it. You do like a cookie sheet. I just always use a bowl. I think because I think I make too much mess otherwise. And I use a potato masher. This works really well, I have found. And then I take the masher more at the end. Decided I should put an apron on strawberry juices. Kind of splashing. Here we are. This looks good to me. And I'm going to put it in the measuring cup. And we have two cups. So I'm going to set that aside and get rid of these. And now we need a cup and three quarters of rhubarb. Um, and it says you can finely dice it or you can put it, pulse it in a food processor. It's gonna be cooked then, which breaks down rhubarb. So I'm just going to finely dice it. That was what I decided to do. You don't wanna peel the rhubarb. So if you're in an area where you can't, grow or you don't grow your own rhubarb, 
This is kind of a nice recipe because it doesn't take like eight cups of rhubarb. No, it's just you know, a little less than two cups. So that's real doable with how they sell it in the grocery store. I'm very happy that I'm able to grow it, that we had a patch when we moved in here. I went to the store and just checked out the rhubarb that they say is locally grown. And it was, I don't think it, it was like this long and they were skinny and it was about four of these and it was just under $5. I went, yikes. But I would be tempted if I didn't have access to rhubarb. Okay, I have one and three quarter cup. I still have this much left and I had picked more too, so I might even end up chopping some up and vacuum sealing it and freezing it. So now we get a pot that you're gonna make your jam in and you put just three quarters of a cup of water and your half a cup of mint leaves. So we we'll need this to come to a boil. Get all the leaves in there. And then we're gonna cover and let it sit for 10 minutes. Let it steep like tea and let it infuse that little bit of water. The water is taking on a slightly green tint. I don't know if you can see that. Make sure it's at a good boil. I'm gonna put the lid on and put the timer for 10 minutes. The timer went off, so we can remove that lid. Ooh, it smells like mint. Wow, that is really a minty smell. That's pretty awesome. So now I am going to you can use a spoon. Get all these leaves out. The mint flavor in there. I mean, there's gonna probably be some tiny particles, but that's different than a chunk of leaf. Everything else is smaller than that, so I think we got it all. Let me get rid of this. I have my steam canner over here that I have heating up, and I have lids that I have in hot water too. Um, four jars does recommend heating up your lids. And I don't always for pressure canning, but I do when I'm water bath or steam canning. So let me see if I can get you a better view so you can see the color. Yeah, so you can see the color is sort of murky green. So now we're gonna add in all the rhubarb and turn the heat back on high and Bring it to a boil. So we're going to heat this up, bring it to a boil, take, and it takes about a minute, then it will get all mushy. It's starting to boil. And it doesn't take long for rhubarb to soften up. In fact, I can already feel a difference when I do this. Make sure to get any down that are on the edge of the pan. Next, we're gonna add 
the lemon juice, one table of lemon juice, seven cups of sugar, and the strawberries. Ah, look at this, this is. And then we're gonna bring it up to a hard boil for one minute. Here's the strawberries. I'm going to do seven cups of sugar. tablespoon of bottled lemon juice. Stir it up. Turn the heat back up. Now if you have the real red rhubarb, then yours will be much redder. This is the strawberries are doing their trick, so that's a good thing. You can add food coloring. I never usually do that. Rarely do I add food coloring. So we need to keep stirring this and then bring it up to a hard boil for one minute. And that means a, it still boils when you're stirring it. It is heating up and getting ready to boil. Okay, it is boiling now. And see when I stir it, it's still boiling. So I'm gonna set the timer for one minute. Ooh, it's really boiling. I don't want it to boil over. Okay, we're gonna remove this from the heat. Adding in, adding in the liquid pectin. You want to make sure you squeeze it all out. And now stir it in. I'm going to put some on a plate. I should have put the plate in the freezer but I'll put it in the freezer like this. Okay, it was just in there a couple, not even a minute, I don't think, and it is gelling up. Jams and jellies have a quarter inch head space, so that's like way up here. Or if you, on your debubbler, it's this little one there. Okay, stir it, make sure there's no air pockets. Need a smidge more. It just touches at the quarter inch. Wipe this rim really good to make sure all that sugar and stuff is off. Then we're gonna take our four jar lids. I do have a discount code down below if you need to stock up for canning season. And I am very happy with these lids. They have a good seal rate. The company is wonderful to work with. And here's the first jar going on the steam canner. So let's fill this one.
I was given some of these canning jars that have the fruit on the outside, little squatty round ones. I really like them. Deep bubble. And take slight bit out. I always put a towel down and I love these four jar towels. But I put a towel down because it, everything gets sticky and it marks up your counter and I just have to put this straight into the wash. I just take my towels after canning and throw them all in and turn on the wash. Washing machine and it says I should have seven half pints. And I will bring you back. See how many I end up with. I ended up with enough that I don't know if the seventh one would be full. So I always keep a quarter pint on hand than any other that's left over. Yeah, it would not have filled. Hmm. If there's a little bit left, I'll just put in a bowl and we'll use it. Okay, I put my lid on my steam canner, turn the heat up, and it has to come to a temperature I have marked here. When you get a steam canner, there's a testing process. I have a video on that if you're interested, but every steam canner has its own guidelines and directions, so make sure you read whichever one you have. I'll have a link for mine down below. Um, I'm really happy. I have the stainless steel kitchen crop one. Okay, this, you can hear, you can hear the steam, and this is starting to rattle. So I need to lower the temperature because we don't want it to do that. It's up high enough. You see, it matches up where my marker is. So now I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes. Timer went off. Let's turn off the stove. 10 minutes are up, lift up. I just love that sound. I think that was all of them. These need to sit for 24 hours before I move them. It is part of the process. And if you do get some floating, it really isn't a big deal. Um, it happens a lot, especially with strawberry. Just stir it up when you open it up. But this isn't like a real fruit-filled jam. It ended up being a lot of almost like jelly. Here is the jam all finished. There it is on some toast. The mint isn't real strong. I might even steep it longer last. The mint isn't a very strong flavor. It's like in the background. So in the future, I might even steep it a little longer, but it is good. The color is beautiful. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time at Pike Creek Farm.